أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and messenger May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. Last session, we had started with the new set of verses addressing the issue of the hour, the day of resurrection, the day of judgment, the advent of the hour, and what happens, the events that accompany that hour. Allah Azza wa Jal was addressing the disbelievers of Quraysh who did not expect nor believe in resurrection and in meeting Allah Azza wa Jal and in the hour. They rejected this. They denied it totally. And therefore, their actions, their behavior, their deeds, their words were not in accordance with that. They were not prepared simply because they did not believe. They had no reason to prepare for this horrible moment, terrifying day, the hour, the day of judgment. And therefore, due to this disbelief and due to this denial, their hearts did not glorify Allah Azza wa Jal. They did not praise Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal addressed them with these verses. Perhaps their hearts will move. Perhaps they will give heed. As weak as human beings are, yet they make themselves opponents to Allah Azza wa Jalla. 
Who is mankind? Who are we to exceed the limits of Allah? Who are we to sin and transgress? Who are we to go beyond the boundaries of Allah Azza wa Jal? Who is this weak creature, mankind, to do all of that? To challenge Allah Azza wa Jal? To forget the hour, the event that will come as soon, all start as soon as we taste death. The value of mankind, the status of human beings is directly related to faith and righteous deeds. And it's based on that that he escalates and ascends in ranks or go in lower ranks of hellfire and get punished by Allah Azza wa Jal. We seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from punishment. We mentioned last time or last session that the time, the specified time of the hour is something that was not disclosed to mankind. Allah concealed it. And it is one of the unseen knowledge. which we believers believe in because we were commanded to believe in. Allah Azza wa Jal <coughs> says in chapter Al-An'am وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوْ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Which means and with him are the keys of the unseen, the knowledge of the unseen. None knows them except him, and he knows what is on the land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but that he knows it. And no grain is there within the darkness of the earth, and no moist or dry thing, but that it is written in a clear Record. Commenting on this verse, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, as reported by Ibn Abi Hatim, he said, There is no tree on land or in the sea, but there is a designated angel writing everything that falls from it every leaf that falls from it. Abdullah ibn al-Harith al-Ansari and this is also reported by Ibn Abi Hatim. He said, there is not a tree on earth and no spot on earth as little as the place one pricks a needle but has a designated angel. He recourse to Allah Azza wa Jal, its knowledge, its humidity, and its hardness and dryness. Regarding this leaf fall, one time we were having breakfast in the backyard of my house. This is back in the States. 
And I was sitting with the brothers, and in the backyard of my house there was a, a walnut tree. And as we were eating, it caught my eye one leaf that was dancing. And then it hit this branch, and then this branch, and then finally it landed on a spot. I said, brothers, look at this. Allah Azza wa Jal decreed for this leaf to fall. And in His comprehensive knowledge, He knew the path this leaf is going to take. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala knew exactly and precisely where this leaf is going to land. And this is only one leaf off of this tree, and this is only one tree in this backyard. So imagine all the leaves that fall with a decree to try to imagine the great knowledge, comprehensive knowledge, complete knowledge Allah Azza wa Jal possesses as the creator. And I was surprised doing a research on the matter that there was a uh, a center in the United States called U.S. Forest Inventory and Analysis National Program. This is a center that does statistics, it seems, and things of the sort. It is written there that they've taken a sample of a particular type of trees in a designated area as a sample to do, to do a study and extract statistics from. It was estimated that a mature tree averages 200,000 leaves. It carries 200,000. And that the estimated number of trees in that sample they've taken was 203 billion trees. A simple calculation, multiplying the number of, the average number of leaves a tree carries and the number of trees they had in that sampled area, we get 4.06 times 10 to the power 16 leaves, which is called 40 quadro, quadrillion leaves. New, new numbers I'm discovering now. Every session I come with a new number. This is in a small part of a forest in a particular area of the United States. We're not talking about the entire United States, let alone Canada and the United States, let alone the entire world. Are you with me? Are we hearing this right? Can you imagine the number of leaves that fall? Can you start imagining the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal? All of this was decreed and known. And it happens Allah Azza wa Jal knows exactly how it's going to happen. And that's only one aspect of life. That's only trees and tree leaves. And not everything else. It is terrifying enough to know that Allah Azza wa Jal knows what we conceal in the hearts. And what goes in our minds. That's enough to terrify us, and it's also enough for us to glorify Allah Azza wa Jalla. We will conclude with this and resume in the following session, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaha.